So I have the image. Next, I want some text. So I'm going to go ahead and enter some text here and just some random text. So the best car to drive is vintage. Of course, highlight the text, make it bigger. I can now also customize this text box. Okay, and let me show you how it's done. But first, let me f enter a rectangle here because I'm going to customize, bring this forward or bring this to front, change some color. All right, perfect. And again, you can play with this, right? So the idea is so that you understand, see how it snaps to the grid lines and how our blog or the website is kind of all in order, right? And once you group those and then you add constraints, so it becomes a responsive design as well. So the best car to drive is vintage. Let me go ahead and in fact, I'm gonna keep these edges straight. All right, next I'm gonna highlight the actual rectangle box and the fill color, I'm gonna change it to the eyedropper and make sure I use the same color as our logo, okay? So it matches the actual theme as well. And this is good practice, by the way. So I have my image here. I'm gonna make this bigger, add another button here, and that's gonna say find out more. And this I'm gonna fill with the other color of the logo, add some text. I can say click here, make the font smaller. Let's zoom in so you can actually see what's going on. It's much easier to work when you're zoomed in. And let's center this. Make this box a little smaller. There we go. Give this button a nice shape. Make some round edges. Or just leave it as it is because everything is rectangular, right? So I'm not doing any round edges at this point in time. All right, perfect. So once I have a button created, let's add some more text. Change the text, rather. Let's say find out more. And of course, center this. Looks better. And I'm going to set some constraints to this. Same thing. Add some constraints. Because once you set these constraints, it becomes responsive, right? So if you make the actual frame size smaller or larger, all the items adjust. So I'm going to group these as well. So I'm going to select the text, the frame, all of these four items, and create a group. And I'm going to call this main text. All right, great. So let's zoom out a bit. There we go. Next, I'm going to put maybe a date here on top or read more on the bottom. And of course, you can add some more text. And let's say it's April. Let's zoom in again. There we go. And I'm going to make sure it's centered or aligned left. And then I can also adjust the top bottom as well. And it's a good idea to do with all of these, right? So as you're working with them, you can center them. You can align left. Center, it depends. So I have it as a line left, or you can center this to the actual frame behind it as well. So this is another tool when you actually work with text, you can actually use automatic adjustments. Same thing here. I'm going to center it, align it. All right. So I need, let's zoom out here. So not, once I have these, I'm going to group them, right? So I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the entire group, or I can simply highlight that way as well. So either way, on your left navigation pin, you have the ability to highlight all of them. And then I'm going to create a group. I'm going to call this, I'm going to call this banner group. Perfect. And of course, once I have the group, I need to also ensure that this image of the car is also left and right, and then left and right for the entire group as well. Okay, perfect. Maybe I'll do a bottom here as well, top and bottom, so it snaps. Okay, this looks good. On the bottom here, I'm going to create some additional rectangles. I'm going to place some images of the cars, right? So let's zoom in so you can actually see. I'm going to insert an image within this box. Just some random images here. Perfect. Let's create a component. Alt key down. Just copy it. Snap to the gutter line here. 
or the left of this column. Maybe do another one. I'm going to continue to do this and then of course I can align them based on my grid. So this is going to go to the far right and this one to the far left. And then of course my rest of the spacing goes in between. And that's how the grid lines help by the way, right? So as you're working with these images, you should have the ability to select them all, group them. I'm going to call this small cars. And next I can simply center them, make them a little larger. Hold the shift key down, right? So they snap, so they remain proportionate. Okay, there we go. All right, so our blog, a simple page is coming right along nicely. I'm going to add some text here. I'm going to say featured, make the text smaller. And of course, I can create a button as well. I can copy the top one or I can create a new button as well. I can always use icon sets from the internet. You can go to materials.io or you can use Google icon sets and whatnot to actually create these images. The purpose here is to show you the actual tools and how to work with constraints and layers and text so that you get comfortable with the grid lines and the actual fundamentals of Figma design. But as far as the stock images and the social media icons are concerned, of course, the sky is the limit. You can design your own theme that way. So once I have the featured cars, I'm going to go ahead and simply replace some of these images, add some more cars. That's one way to do it. Let me show you the other way. So once you highlight and do this, so you double click on this object, it brings up the image, choose image from here. So both ways are correct. So instead of crop, let's say fit or fill, and then choose the image. Let's select the other car and it's going to place the other car in this. Similarly, I can navigate to the next one, choose image and how about this car. Notice how it's actually cropping automatically, right? So that's a good thing about Figma design. You don't have to worry about the image resizing. Let me go ahead to the next one. And likewise, I'm going to do it for the rest of these two images of cars as well. One more to go. I'm going to go ahead. The last image here. Click choose image. And then let's see. One last image right here. Although this, this blog is about vintage cars, right? But I have this new latest design car. Maybe I want to change it to display a vintage. There we go. Perfect. So we have our featured cars. We have all of these images placed. And of course, our groups are good. And if I collapse these groups, I'll have the small cars, the banner group, and so on. So that way things remain organized. So let me select the desktop and then remove these grid lines for now so you can actually see what the page looks like. Of course, I can have the page background or I can color the background of this page. I'm going to use the eyedropper and maybe choose this color or you can choose any other color or even the image itself as well. So it just depends on which background you choose to use. So let's keep it white for now. So once you have this blog, of course you can add a footer, footer line here or add some more areas on your blog. You can make this smaller or larger, but you get the idea. So that way you can design your own elements. If I like to place maybe another tool here, maybe a border, I could do so. That kind of separates, right? And I can create a component off of this. Zoom in a little bit so it's easier. So that's 1440 by 10. Maybe you want to do 1440 by 5. And then since this is a component, I'm going to hold the Alt key down. Zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And then of course highlight all of them and then group them. I'm going to call these three lines and of course take this entire group call three lines and make sure I set these constraints. I'm going to change the color. Let's zoom out fix up my two lines on top. There we go. All right. So you get the idea, right? Of course you can create some more icons. You can insert more icons and create your own blog. Let me work with this image, this rectangle here. I like to actually put a layer here. Same thing, multiply. 
Maybe you want to do this 80% or how about 75? There we go. Perfect. So once you have this blog created, right? Next, you can give this blog to your developers. How do they actually know what to code? It's easier. Notice the code tab on the right side of the screen. So let me select my frame. And then any object that you select on your blog or website, for example, if I were to select this image, it will display the CSS code for me or it's going to show me the code. So once I select this image, it gives me the CSS code uh, 500 pixels by 224, the width, the height, the constraints, the opacity, and so on. So for developers, it's easier to actually take a look at these. They can Most times they'll copy these and use them in their code editor, whether they're using Atom or Sublime or any Eclipse for development purposes. But that's up to the developers, right? So all you would do is just give them handover this or in fact invite them you can share this send this link to your developer they can come in here take a look at each of these CSS code similarly if I were to select this group notice it gives me the CSS properties for this notice in addition to the table format I can have the code so if I click on code it will give me the actual CSS code that the developer can look at the width the height the left and the top for this group similarly for each of these right so all I need to do is just give my developers this particular layout I just demonstrated in this simple project but the idea the goal here for you guys is to understand and kind of take a look at all of the different tools that I've used and if I've miss, missed certain tools make sure you assign yourself your homework right so kind of work with them because I did not add too much detail into going into maybe components or constraints because I wanted to demonstrate most of these areas in this one lecture but at your end when you're actually designing you need to spend some time okay and that's the best way to learn so go ahead practice create your first website or a blog maybe add another footer area here on the bottom and let this be your homework so as a homework just go ahead and add a photo area maybe add some icons some copyright text and so on so i hope this helps practice and let's move to the next lesson